were asked to talk about the uh, wood window restoration and repair. And I wanted to let you know that this talk is usually covers steel windows as well as leaded glass, but it's, it's gonna be abbreviated and we're gonna focus on wood double hungs and wood casement windows. Next. So um, I hear seminars and talks by others and, and you'll see it on home shows and, and they'll give you this impression that window repair and restoration is very easy. You can do it from home and you can do it for uh, relatively low cost. Uh, but I've not found that to be the case working on other people's homes or my own home. This is a house, a uh, previous house we owned and uh, where we restored the windows. And I just had to show the hardware because it's so interesting um, design by Robert Spencer, a Oak Park, uh, Oak Park, former Oak Park resident and Great Prairie School architect. Next. Uh, there are a lot of sources out there and um, uh, the information's available, so that's not really the issue with working on your own windows. I'm trying to balance this between how you would work with a professional and a contractor coming in to work on your windows versus uh, trying to uh, do it yourself. And um, uh, the source material is there. It's really more about the time involved and the labor involved. Most people aren't willing or able to invest the kind of time to restore windows properly. Next. This is just a, uh, a quote out of Fine Home Building many years ago that I, I pulled out for the window talks and, and that window replacement is usually replacing a window that has already been replaced once before. Uh, so we love to drive up to a site and the original windows are still there. And they've been there for 70, 80, 90 plus years. And that is for a variety of reasons. It's the quality of the wood, it's the fact that uh, they're loose fitting, loose fitting, long lasting. Um, people look at performance standards for new windows and, and those performance standards are established by a center of the glass measurement. And of course, most modern windows will have insulated glass or thermal pane units in them. So it's really deceiving because after that window has been in service for a year or two, the neoprene and the seals and the weather strips start breaking down, compressing, and the performance quickly drops away to be more even with a historic window restored with the storm window. Next. So I just wanted to show you that um, we have a number of sash and blind company catalogs uh, at our offices and uh, they show that, you know, all windows were not created equal. They, they had a variety of quality um, that you could order and, and uh, uh, in terms of wood species, in terms of the thickness of the sash, um, one and three quarter and two and a quarter would be fairly standard, but you could also get thinner windows that were only one and a half or even only one and three eighths inches thick. Um, you can note on this one that even uh, lugs, adding lugs to the window was an extra. Next. So these are some shots from um, a window manufacturer, well-known window manufacturer, and, and they had many advantages in the, in the shop when they were building these uh, initially. Uh, they had full access, they were able to slip in sashes and parting stops without being in the field or having to tear things out to, to um, remove them. They had very high quality wood to work with, and uh, it's, it's very difficult to match the initial quality of the window when it first went in. It takes a lot of work and it takes um, a lot of time and labor. Next. So our approach is usually uh, to walk into a, a new house and I think a homeowner could, could follow along with these steps. We, we survey and schedule all the windows. Maybe there are 50, you know, 60 windows on the house and, and only um, 15 of them are used heavily. Uh, maybe only 20 are ever used. And that suddenly changes the way that you handle um, uh, how you have to weather strip those windows and how they have to be able to, to uh, perform um, as well as adding screens and other costs that drive up, drive up the cost of restoration. You can also determine, we also prioritize the, the schedule and figure out um, what those priority windows are and, and where to deal with those uh, first. And we like to complete a mock-up 
to show expectations. Sometimes um, an owner's on the fence about doing sort of a moderate uh, repair approach that um, is, is, will cost X versus really restoring the windows for longevity. Um, some owners aren't even able to look down the road 20, 25 years and know whether they'll still be in the same property. Um, it also depends on the unique or custom nature of the windows, whether they have leaded glass, whether they have arches um, that can drive up the cost a lot, uh, whether they're unusually thick or multi-pane, maybe a Queen Anne sash that has 15 or 16 lights in it, uh, that would take a lot of work to uh, reglaze. Um, and then where does the work begin and end is important for you to talk about with your contractor and consider yourself. Are you are they doing sashes only? There was a company in, in Chicago, um, uh, still around, I believe, for years called Just Sashes. They just did the sashes. And I'd ask them what else they would do. And then would they do the inside trip? Just sashes. So um, find out what is covered and, and where that work stops and begins because there are several stopping points. Uh, are they dealing with the joint at the masonry or outside? trim on the house and the and the casing? Are they dealing with the interior stops? Are they going to bring it all the way around to um, the plaster? Uh, site access and site protection are important. Um, lead paint, there's you expect to find lead paint on, on most historic windows, particularly steel. And then occasionally you also find um, asbestos in the glazing and or sealants. And that's something to consider as well. Uh, so we like to look into what kind of R&D is involved and, you know, if they have some unusual hardware that's going to be hard to match or replace and whether you can uh, Frankenstein it in a way or harvest hardware from some parts of the house and move it around to the windows that are going to be operable. Next. So this is an example uh, we're working on uh, on the north side and um, the house built around 19... 15, I believe, and it has aluminum windows right now on the front porch. Uh, those are going to go away uh, eventually, so we had to prepare for restoring the windows back behind them for ventilation once they're removed. The windows that are shown in orange are going to be 100% of that opening is operable. The upper sash moves, the lower sash moves, uh, the casements on the end gable completely fully open, and we like to do that in locations where um, it's going to be difficult to change out a storm or a screen, or it's going to be difficult to access that window from outside to even clean it. Uh, you know, a lot of the people opt for us and for other restoration and repair companies, a lot of them opt for um, just restoring the lower sash and leaving the upper sash inoperable. And that's great until you go to clean them and then they're they're difficult to reach. So unless you have a porch to roof, uh, roof to work off of or you're, you're not far off the ground, then um, that can be a challenge. Next. Uh, often, often, often we show up and, and the main problems have been amateur painting, um, quick painting jobs, clogging up the hardware, um, weather strip that is jammed full of dirt and debris so the windows don't meet up properly. Next. This includes paint that ends up on chains and hardware that uh, wasn't meant to be painted. Um, but I also want to show you that the, the real, you know, Achilles heel of, of double hung windows and trying to retrofit them is at the meeting rail. It's very difficult to get a great seal all the way across there. There are a number of options for that. Uh, on your right, the photo showing the groove and rail weather strip. Uh, this, this rail will go into a groove that's on the wood sash itself, and it provides a very effective um, seal and, uh, for air infiltration um, and moisture as far as that goes. Uh, we're lucky enough to have a Dorbin metal weather strip right in Cicero, where you can still uh, obtain groove and rail weather strip in zinc and or uh, brass. Next. So um, painted sash cords are also a problem. They are, uh, it will tend to rot the cord, which will cause them to break when you, we go and find a lot of broken cords. It's because they were painted in the past. 
and uh, made them brittle and, uh, and break. Um, I did want to point out in the right image there, the, the J strip that runs along the meeting rail, that metal weather, uh, metal weather strip is uh, the most difficult type to, to install, but also the most effective. Um, very requires maintenance. You got to keep the debris out of there or else the window will jam up and down and it won't line up properly and seal. Next. So this is just a quick diagram um, I developed a long time ago for a, a window exhibit in New York uh, on windows through time. It's actually for the National Park Service. It just shows how muntins uh, evolve. That's the small narrow strips between the glass on a window and they, this, this, the sticking, it's also known as the sticking of the window. This will depend on, um, uh, you know, what you can alter, how you can change out the glass and how much meat you have to work with uh, before you have to actually replace that piece or it's been too chewed up by previous um, glass replacements. Next. We're just going to go over some hardware options for you. We're going to keep moving right along. Next. So there are a lot of companies out there making uh, hardware for window restoration and repair, and they're, they're readily available online. Um, some unique uh, styles of weights that weren't available historically, but that you can break off segments and, and to balance the window, or weights that you can slide on to um, account for additional weight. If you upgrade the glass and you put in, uh, you route out the sash and put in an insulated glass unit, you're going to be adding weight to that sash. So you got to add counterweight to uh, the balancing system so that the window still moves properly. Next. Uh, Killian Hardware is one we use a lot. They're in Philly and they just have a, a very large selection of uh, window hardware. If you can't, I mean, buy local first, of course, if you can find it at, at your local Ace, uh, but a lot of home centers don't carry a, a real uh, a wide variety of, of window repair and re restoration hardware. So this is one source that we use from uh, Philadelphia. Next. Uh, there are a lot of uh, high-end companies. Phelps also makes very good hardware. Um, and provides more um, ornamental and uh, architectural hardware. Uh, they tend to have very high-end finishes and uh, we use that a lot on uh, particular projects. Next. Lane, Stripe Rock. I'm just throwing these out uh, so that you have some sources that you can look up if you're trying to find certain pieces to repair or restore your windows. Next. And then sometimes, uh, you know, you have to custom make hardware. This is actually from Mays Lake Peabody Estate out in Oak Brook. And uh, there were some missing pieces of hardware there. Um, iron was used on the normal rooms, but we had to replace uh, hardware that was nickel that was on the bathrooms. And um, we had to have those made. This is a reproduction made by uh, Albar, Wilmette Platers in Wilmette. Next. I don't think we're going to have time to get into a lot of energy performance issues, but just know that uh, you have two real issues. You have uh, air infiltration that comes around the joints of the window, at the head, along the jam, at the meeting rail, and at the sill. And you have to weather strip those locations to uh, slow down or impede that air and moisture infiltration. And then, of course, you have cold conducting through the glass itself. Uh, a storm window is going to resolve a lot of this, uh, especially a good quality storm, and that's what we're going to get into now. Next. So uh, air infiltration at the meeting rail, you can see that meeting rails also evolved over time. The, these early plane rails are 1850s and earlier, and you get up to rabbited check rails that are pretty much from 1900 on. Uh, so that also gave, gives you options for different types of weather stripping and it just depends on the type that you have on your home. Next. Uh, wood glazing versus putty glazing uh, versus synthetic materials like latex, uh, finishing options, those are all uh, could require a lot longer presentation, but uh, we'll touch upon a few of them here. Next. 
Uh, very high end finishes can be found on extraordinary homes. This again is uh, Mays Lake Peabody Estate where everything on the exterior casing was pine and they faux, faux finished it in a faux pas finish. Um, it was loose, it was just a dragging technique really, but it helped blend it with the uh, half timber that was all originally stained and, and red oak. Next. Uh, some aluminum and uh, wood storm window options are certainly available. Um, you can get them fixed, that'll always be less expensive. You can get them operable and you can have various types of screens that will either uh, be installed by clips and removed and stored uh, in the house or they're in a track and they're always in the opening similar to triple track aluminum storms which tend to leak more air and um, be problematic in terms of efficiency. Next. So uh, Pleasant Home, we did get a chance to work at Pleasant Home. I just wanted to talk briefly about, you know, look at the number of windows on this house. This is of course, pre-central air conditioning and the different styles of windows. So you can imagine um, how important it is to survey those ahead of time and plot out what's gonna happen at every window opening. What, take an inventory of hardware, do you need screens? Do you need storms? Um, it would be a, a, this would be a, a comprehensive approach to restoring the windows at Pleasant Home or any other large home with uh, many, many windows. Next. Uh, open screen porches, of course, were very common at the time. And um, this was a Chicago company, Chicago Riverdale Lumber Company that was advertising uh, uh, screens that could be disassembled and, and uh, set up on the porch seasonally. Next. Uh, the main problem with triple tracks is if you have any unusual character to your window at all. Uh, this is a house in Chicago where a previous owner had installed aluminum triple tracks. They're just a 50-50 opening. So you always have that bar cutting across the middle. And as you can see, it really harms the uh, Prairie School design that was unique to these casement windows. Next. Um, we're gonna run through some storm window options. This is option one, and uh, it's, it's just not much of a step above a home insulation, uh, window insulation kit that you get from a um, home, home center or hardware store uh, that you would uh, set up seasonally with a, a hairdryer. Next. Uh, this is option two, this is a, a, a little more higher quality. Um, again, uh, no impact on the exterior. This is all interior, uh, but would resolve um, comfort problems at specific windows, maybe the kitchen or condensation issues in the bath. Uh, not really a long-term solution in my mind. Uh, it would have to be removed to clean the interstitial space, but uh, still much less cost than trying to deal with um, new storms that are fitted to the exterior. Next. Uh, triple track storms are very common. They uh, became very popular in the 1960s on and uh, usually are, are long worn out by the time we show up on site if we're dealing with the window restoration. But they do make higher quality aluminum uh, storms today and um, uh, they can be a uh, less expensive or modest uh, option if uh, the historic character of the window is not critical to the design of the house. Next. Uh, one company that we've worked with in the past and that a lot of people uh, mention when we're, when we're on site looking at windows, something a homeowner could order themselves is Spencer Works. Uh, they are trying to find it. They've got a hybrid, if you will. It's a wood frame window that will fit as a storm, it looks like a historic storm from outside, but it has an aluminum triple track mounted on the inside of it, um, which is behind a wood rabbit. And, uh, it, you know, still maintains the convenience of having uh, the screen and storms all in the window opening at all times. Next. Uh, traditional fixed storm would be uh, the next step up in my mind of having uh, something more appropriate for a historic home. And these often had adjusters that were installed at the bottom that would just kick them out if they were hinged at the top. Next. 
this is a good example of the of that just what I'm talking about here on the on the third floor or second floor I'm sorry um, these two windows that are on storm adjusters this is a home in Berwyn in 1936. Next. Combination storms are definitely a step up. They require a lot more um, fitting and tooling in the shop to uh, make everything fit properly. Um, there's a lot more coordination of, of individual parts, but they offer a lot more flexibility. Now you can have a screen storm insert that you can change out for just the lower or for the lower and the upper sash. Um, much more cost involved here. It just depends. Uh, there, there are lots of cost saving strategies like pine versus mahogany and, and the quality of the, the, the wood, and the, the storm that you want. But um, uh, it would be a, uh, a, an option that we would normally promote when we are looking at window restoration for windows that are operated a lot. Next. Um, this is an example of, of one of these types of storms, this one just has a bronze screen in the lower right now, and it changes out with a piece of glass. This is on a bungalow in, uh, in Evanston. Next. Uh, I had to show you at least one Frank Lloyd Wright house. It is Oak Park after all, right? So this is the Edelman house uh, in Fox Point, uh, Wisconsin. Next. And there, um, they were looking for, the architects wanted a lead rating on it. I believe they, they achieved a lead platinum and we had to add a second generation of storms on the outside. Now, this was particularly challenging because of Wright's uh, frameless corners. And um, we produced a whole new set of storms in Cyprus. Uh, you lose a couple inches of depth. Uh, I wasn't thrilled about it on a house of this quality. You, you would. You know, you'd like to see it as authentic as possible, but my uh, fallback position here is that it is reversible. These are all latched in with um, a simple cam hardware uh, and they can all be removed in a matter of hours and you would be back to the original look of the house. Next. I had to show you the interior because it is Frank Lloyd Wright and after all, this is Oak Park. Next. So uh, an all wood combination storm would be the most expensive. That's where even the frames for the inserts are made of wood. And again, we're relying on typically uh, what are called cams to lock in that with the uh, exterior frame. Um, it feels the most historically appropriate, but they can get very expensive. Um, this information is actually relatively dated, but uh, it'd have to be a fairly small window for us to be able to do it for 700 if it was made out of mahogany because there are just so many parts to it and so much machining. Next. Uh, let's keep moving. It's, this is all about color and we're gonna go through these pretty fast, but you know, what style of house do you have? What do you want those sashes to do? I'm not advocating this as a historically correct color scheme, but at least the sashes are dark and the storm windows are dark and they're receding. And that's typically what you want on a Victorian. Next. This is a totally different scenario. If, they have, if the window has a lot of muttons, and especially if that mutton pattern is really interesting, like these diamonds, uh, you want to be able to see those windows. Uh, when we arrived on this job in the upper left, everything had been painted a dark green and they virtually disappeared. So we found the uh, historic color and brought that back and it added a lot of character to the window openings. Next. Uh, here too, uh, the window was not meant to just you know, this is a, a very typical 50s, 60s, right? Uh, uh, um, just a, a monochromatic color palette where everything's the same. That's not what was meant to be. Originally, we found the dark brown stain that was there and restored that window uh, to its original color. Next. Again, color can make a big difference. Uh, we found this green on this house uh, also in uh, the Evanston area and um, went back away from the monochrome palette that probably, or the, the uh, monochrome palette that probably went out in the 70s to the, to the green on your right. Next, that's a shot of those windows. Uh, they look particularly good at Christmas time. And they also have screens and uh, storm inserts that actually in this case pull to the inside because they're out swinging casements. So we didn't have that option to put them on uh, outside. Next. 
again, color. Uh, this one is um, uh, on the north side and all the windows have been painted white over the years. Uh, we're in the process of helping these owners restore the building, the house and the, the stucco will go back to a, a more natural sepia tone. And once we get rid of all the white, we think it's all gonna pull together. Next. Uh, you can go next. It's a stucco Victorian up in Wilmette. And again, single, single one over one sashes and dark colors in a Victorian is what we'd be looking for. Next. And that's the house restored. Um, this was probably 10, 12 years ago, if not more. Next. Maze Lake, um, we've touched on that briefly, but just a lot of windows. Benjamin Marshall really opened up the entire house. And of course, Marshall was always into color. He almost always used a colored stucco, uh, pink for the Edgewater Hotel and a bluish green stucco out here at Maze Lake. Next. And next. Also true on the interior at Maze Lake. Uh, these windows have been replaced out with typical anodized brown you know, aluminum frames and um, we developed restoration to bring back the original uh, windows and doors to that opening, uh, to that sunroom space and also bring back the original color. Next. I don't think we're gonna have time to get into steel, but um, just if there, anyone has any questions after we're through here, I'd be happy to respond to that. Next. There are roll screens available for out swinging casements. They're still made today by Phantom Screen and some other companies and um, really an ingenious option for, for leaving the screen closed most of the time and just, uh, or open most of the time and closing it when in this summer season when you need it. Next. Uh, we do doors as well and, and we assume that many people are trying to restore their windows, also wanna restore their doors. Uh, don't give up on them. These, these doors were restored up in Evanston and um, the Dawes House, a famous national landmark in, in that area in Evanston. Next. These are the doors uh, finished and back to their natural form. Wow. Thank you. Uh, we could close there. I think we're probably out of time. So, Neil, thank you so much. So interesting what is available and what can be done while uh, saving those windows. It's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much.